When I was first approached by a young boy confessing his porn addiction to me, I was certain that he's either insane or joking. Never did I think for a moment that porn, sexual relationships and masturbation would turn to some kind of addiction, a compulsive behavior that could easily ruin your entire life. Later on, after delving into my research in this area, I realized the intensity of the problem and why so many addicts have thought of even ending up their lives because they couldn't bear the pressure the pornography causes. And perhaps you are one of those who were hooked on porn for years and looking for a solution. But in order for you, and even for those who are not addicted, get the best understanding of the subject, then we should all comprehend how addiction to pornography works. Because the more you know, as I always say, the more you know, the more you grow. The more you get acquainted of what's happening, the most likely your resistance will increase and uh, you'll be able in the long run to beat up this compulsive habit. First of all, this has nothing to do with being religious or not. Anyone could be hooked on porn due to so many circumstances. Maybe you were harassed sexually when you were young or came across some images that made you so curious and as a result you started to watch again and again. Or perhaps you have seen your role models watching porn and so you started imitating them. Maybe your spouse has less interest in sexual intimacy, intimacy and as a result you found pornography to be an alternative and so on. So whether you are a religious person or not, Muslim or otherwise, Addiction does not know faith. Addiction to pornography is an intensive tool that could easily make you a slave to your own desire. Pornography, if it is not fought against, could make you lose control over your own action. Many people argue about the definition of pornography and what is it really. Well, here is how I see it. Pornography are these images that teach you how to use strangers images, films that you watch, other people's filthy practices and, and actions for your own temporary sexual pleasures. Without partners, without emotions, without love, without connection, with any, with any real person. It does rely entirely on fantasy and illusion. So instead of engaging sexually with your partner, with your spouse, pornography loves isolation and loves selfish pleasure. So the, the question now is, how did it become addictive? Just like any other addictive substance, pornography followed the same pattern. First is the exposure to these materials, then your brain will immediately register this activity. Hormones like dopamine will be fired up to remind you of this activity. You will be trying to resist because you know it is wrong. You know it's wrong then justification will be presented uh, by your unconscious mind, something like, at least it is better than adultery, it is better than zina. Then you go ahead anyways, unwillingly, and start browsing porn. And of course, in a split of a second, then you experience this temporary and instant pleasure. And then comes a dark period of shame and guilt, which is much longer, by the way, much longer than the pleasurable one. What have I done? You'll start asking yourself, am I a hypocrite? How I wish I could have never done such and such and so on and so forth. Then you start promising yourself never to access porn again. But after a few days, weeks or even months, you relapse and go around the same cycle again and again for years. Now you should ask yourself, is that really something I wanted to repeat for the rest of my life? Is this how I wanted to end up my life? Isn't it time to say no to my desires and develop new, healthy and uplifting habits to replace the bad ones? The good news is that our brain is capable of rewiring itself and adapting new habits. So the choice will always be yours. But without starting out your journey of recovery, nothing is ever going to change. To be able to understand in depth the forceful impact of porn addiction, we will have to look at two sides of the issue, the physical and the emotional sides. Let us briefly talk about the physical side. 
As we know, man's brain is totally different in its structure and design than woman's brain. For example, men in most cases are attracted to visual images. That's what get them aroused sexually. There is something in the brain called thalamus, which is responsible for singling out sexually stimulating images. Even if a man is presented with hundreds of images and one of them is sexually by nature, the thalamus will highlight this image to men. That's why we are advised in Islam to be alert and always lower our gaze. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty said in the Quran, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell to the believing men to lower their gaze and as a result they will be able to guard their modesty, to guard their chastity and private part. And the same command is given to women in the following verse. One of the best solution to protect your eyes and brain from falling into visual addiction is to simply follow the command of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him by lowering your gaze. However, if we let our eyes gaze freely at that which could lead us to any undesirable sexual behavior, then the addiction itself will escalate and we will always seek more erotic images and many a times a person may act out what he had seen and, in, and he may engage in an extramarital relationship and as a result you may end up with a very dangerous sexual transmitted diseases. The problem now is not about satisfying one's self anymore. This era will soon vanish and a person will find himself or herself struggling to cope with the feelings of depression, anxiety and irritations, lack of focus and concentration, headaches and so on. Because the types of porn you used to watch is no longer pleasurable. So it's going to end sooner or later. So you escalate the doses and watch things that you have never thought of watching before like bestiality and other disgusting movies just to get your fix right. As regards to the emotional side, many people will be suffering from the wounds of selfishness or narcissism because pornography promises isolation and self-pleasuring. Many men especially will never care about the feelings uh, of their spouses during intimacy, they will just care about their own pleasure. All what they could care of is their own pleasure and they will never care about their spouse's pleasure. Selfishness would then lead to loneliness, which may lead to so many secretive activities. Then this would lead to becoming an, uh, an anti-social person who does not like to go out and hang out with friends and family members, which could affect, as, as we will discuss on a separate episode, on one's business and career, all of which could badly affect on their relationships, which could lead to severe depression, anxiety and anger, mood swinging and so on. This is what pornography promises, where the path of purity promises clarity, trust, focus and success. As I said in the first episode, the choice will remain yours. So be wise when you choose. Along the path of recovery from pornography and undesirable sexual behaviors, all addicts, with no exception, will experience something called relapses or falling back to their compulsive habits. Although they have done what they can to remain sober, yet they slip and repeated the activity. And so in order for you to beat up this monster called porn addiction and live a life that you've always wanted, you will have to identify these triggers or these situations that could lead you to the repetition of that cycle and avoid them altogether. There are sexual triggers which can be easily identified like watching TV shows, certain movies, sitting for long hours on the beach, just staring at people, browsing through magazines or erotic novels, etc. The solution is very simple. Just avoid these situations and you're good to go. However, the non-sexual triggers are much harder to identify and difficult to deal with. Some of them are the following. Boredom, having nothing to do, is a very common trigger for so many addicts. And the solution is to engage in productive work and keep yourself always busy with things that you normally like to do. Loneliness, pornography loves isolation. 
So do the opposite. Surround yourself with righteous friends and family members and avoid loneliness. Stress and tiredness. Do your best to avoid stressful situations at work, school, or at home, and especially with your spouse. And when these situations occur, the best way to relax is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recite this beautiful supplication. Allahumma inni abduka, ibn abdika, ibn amatika, nasiyati biyadika, maadin fiya hukmuk, adlun fiya qadauk, as'aluka bi kullis min huwa lak, sammayta bihi nafsak, aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqik, aw stathartah bihi fi ilm al-ghaybi indak, an taj'al al-Qur'an rabi'a qalbi, wa nura sadri, wa jala'a huzni, wa dhahaba hammi. O Allah, I am your slave, and the son of your male slave, and the son of your female slave. My forehead is in your hand. You have control over me. Your judgment upon me is assured, and your decree concerning me is just. I ask you by every name that you have named yourself with, revealed it in your book, taught any of your creation, or kept it unto yourself in the knowledge of the unseen that is with you, to make the Quran the spring of my heart and the light of my chest, and the banisher of my sadness, and the reliever of my distress. And when you get tired, the best thing to do is to shut your internet devices, darken your room, and just sleep. One of the things that destroy marriages and relationships is loss of trust between spouses. And this is exactly what pornography does. Though Pornography could get hold of both genders, males and females, yet statistically we know that more men are affected by the addiction to pornography than women. And as a result, it is extremely painful when a wife finds out that her husband is addicted to pornography. She starts feeling that she's not good enough for him and that's why he would seek pleasure elsewhere. For her, he had betrayed that trust and all of a sudden she started feeling that she don't recognize her husband anymore. More than that, she will be battling with a lot of questions on her mind. Like, how long has he been watching porn? Is he having an affair with someone else? Am I not attractive anymore? Did he tell me all truth about his addiction or is he still lying to me? If I left the children with him, Will they be safe? And so on. In short, her entire life all of a sudden turns into a worrying stage with endless doubts. The problem is, rebuilding that trust in this case could take years. And to some wives, it is nearly impossible. And so, divorce could be the only option. A couple of years ago, I was approached by an elderly man who confessed to me his long years of porn addiction. He told me that he had three beautiful children from his beloved wife and every time he would view pornography, he would be left with deep scars and unbearable shame. Well, that's not the whole story. The most painful moment he had experienced in his entire life was when his elder daughter caught him watching pornography while pleasuring himself. He was dumbfounded and could not even move an inch. Seconds later, his wife came in, and so more than 30 years of marriage was over. The wife decided to end it right there. As you can see, it is not fun at all to destroy one of the most sacred relationships for the sake of instant pleasure. And that's exactly what pornography could lead to. So are you up for a change? That's the question you should be asking yourself right now. Wives who seek counseling regarding their husband's addiction to pornography are no longer considering porn as an innocent habit that all men participate in. And the reason is simple. They have now realized the dangerous effects that pornography had caused to their marital relationships. They have now noticed that their husbands have been treating them just like sex objects for their own pleasures. Not only that, but 
they have also noticed that their husbands have been requesting from them to engage in unnatural and unusual forms of degrading sexual acts that they were not used to before. And that is what pornography does. It twists our understanding of the real marital intimacy between spouses. The problem now is that most men who view pornography, if not all, believe that this is normal and that women actually enjoy this type of sexual activity, including anal intercourse and causing them to feel pain through beating and slapping and so on. That's what pornography teaches and this is how the marital relationship is ruined. For all women who are listening to me right now, remember this. Remember this very, very well. If your husbands have requested from you to engage in an unusual, unnatural sexual activity, then this perhaps is your indication that he's been watching pornography and most likely he's been addicted to it. The twisted form of sexual intimacy promoted by pornography could lead to dangerous crimes against women as well, including rape, torture, and emotional harm, because this is exactly what they show on their production. And so a person who constantly watches these scenes may end up acting out what he has been watching, leading him to a lifetime behind bars. What's worse? Men who have resorted to pornography and masturbation thought at first that pornography is a door for them to enhance their sexual abilities. But in no long time, they have also discovered that they started favoring porn and masturbation over real marital relationships. Their brains have become conditioned that sexual pleasure is only attainable through porn and masturbation. And as a result, many of them have suffered from what is called erectile dysfunction or the inability of performing sexually with a partner. Imagine this with me. A person who found pornography enjoyable because he is sexually excited may end up being prevented completely from having sex at all. Believe, I believe you don't want to end up in this condition. As you can see, these problems are serious and very damaging to marriages and marital relationships. Not only that, it could become a very harmful to women's self-esteem and self-worth because when their husbands are unable to perform sexually, in most cases, most wives will be blaming themselves for not being attractive enough. What could make the situation even more worse if the wives have reached to what we consider as an old age. The damaging of marital relationships caused by pornography is real. But what has been mentioned is sufficient for you to quit and seek some help. I believe this is more than enough for you to take a decision. So what's your decision? In August 19, 2014, and according to PR Newswire, almost two-thirds of men, that is 63%, have admitted that they have been viewing pornography while their bosses and managers thought that they were busy working. And more than a third, that is 36% of women, have also sneaked into porn websites during their work. That is what addiction could lead to. It can simply mess up your life in no long time. Whatever reputation you have established in your career or the business that you love the most could easily vanish as a result of your addiction. Not long time ago, for instance, three judges were removed from their post and a fourth has resigned after they were found guilty of viewing pornography on the office computers. Imagine with me the media coverage of such an incident, how the public reacted to the news, how the family members of those judges have received the terrible pressure from neighbors and from the community as a whole. It must have been so difficult for everyone who was involved in this issue. But all these negative scenarios could have been avoided completely if they have sought out some help from professionals. Pornography is out there to ruin not only your relationships with your loved ones, but to destroy your career and your future altogether. Here are some shocking statistics for you to just realize 
the dangerous effects of pornography on one's career and business. According to Proven Men Ministries, who carried out a survey in the USA, they mentioned that most frequent porn users who view pornography at work consist of men between the ages of 31 to 49. Also, about 46% of women between the same age groups, 31 to 49, are also watching pornography at work. The most disturbing statistic in this survey, however, is that married men are more likely to watch porn at work than single men. That is 77% of married men have admitted viewing pornography at work compared to 56% of single men. The survey has also indicated the income of those men and women who are now at threat of leaving the job as a result of their addiction if one day they were to be caught. According to CNBC News, 70% of all online porn access occurs during the 9 to 5 p.m. workday. As you can see, it is alarming and it is not worth losing a job or a career that you are passionate about. It is the time to defeat your addiction and live a life that you've always wanted. It is the time to start saying no and walk away to a direction that's more healthy and pure. On the Telegraph News of the UK and on their issue of May 29, 2014, they have reported a research which suggested that watching pornography may shrink the brain and dull responses to sexual stimulation. The harm of watching pornography is no longer hidden from people of knowledge. According to Max Planck Institute in Berlin, they have found that a part of the brain which activates when people feel motivated or rewarded shrinks and works less efficiently when people regularly watch pornographic materials. And what is more important in the human bodies other than our brains? Shouldn't we become alert and worry about such finding? In the past, scientists believed that after childhood period is over, the brain won't be able to grow any further. They believed that perhaps severe injuries or physical damage could change an adult's brain. However, recently they have discovered that the brain keeps on changing so long as we remain alive. Not only that, but it constantly rewires itself and adopts new habits, practices, and regularly build new pathways, especially in your youth. And this is how porn can be formed and engraved in one's brain. Because porn is intense, compulsive, and addictive, the pathways created in your brain for pornography could last for a very long time and so could compete even with the actual intimacy with a real partner. Can you imagine? Pornography could overpower your brain and disable its function for having a real sexual intimacy with your spouse. In a latest research in Columbia University, Dr. Norman Doige explained how porn could create lasting changes in your physical brain. He said, that watching pornography creates conditions in your brain. These conditions of focus and attention on the images being watched could lead the person to care about nothing else no matter what happened at that particular moment. Whether you are at work, sitting close by your wife, or even when it is the time for your prayer. Now imagine those who have been watching porn for years. These images must have been burned deep inside their brains and the pathways being created are so hardwired that would take great effort and will to be rewired to its pure state. Secondly, Dr. Doige mentioned that porn also helps in releasing and activating certain chemicals and hormones in the brain. Just like any other addictive substance, these chemicals help you feel temporarily happy if these mixed chemicals are released, you are in your comfort zone, happy and satisfied. But once their level is dropped, you are depressed, anxious and irritated. The good news is, as we mentioned earlier, your brain has the ability to rewire itself and get back to its pure state. 
And the only way that can help you achieve that is to feed it with the right images and healthy habits. And of course, by staying away completely from watching pornography. In this episode, I wanted to highlight three main lies that men in general have believed about pornography. They are very important to know because without the correct understanding, it would be very difficult for some men to quit pornography. So here we go. Lie number one. Women love sexual intimacy at any time. Because in porn, they show you that women are always willing to please you and fulfill your sexual need. That's all. They don't show you the other side of women, being mothers, taking care of the house and children while you are at work, cooking for you, caring for you. Perhaps she had received some bad news today and she is not in a good mood, and so on. Pornography portrays women as sex slaves who were created for no purpose other than your own pleasure. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that women are the counterpart of men. The Arabic word shiq means half. It's like the Prophet, peace be upon him, wanted us to know that we are incomplete without them that they are absolutely equal to us and deserve respect and dignity. Now compare this with how pornography wanted you, men, to believe about women. If you are a real man who respect women, you should never promote the filth of this industry by watching the production. Lie number two. Children too should have sex. One of the widely watched pornographic videos and perhaps the biggest selling point for porn producers is imitating minors which means women will be dressed up in a way to look like a schoolgirl or a child then engage in dirty sexual activities porn consumers fail to understand that while watching these disgusting videos your brain is making you believe that you too as an adult can have sex with kids and as a result, I have counseled a person who was actually convicted in a rape case sometimes ago in a, in a schoolyard. When I asked him what led you to do that, he said, I guess I have learned it from pornographic films. Lie number three. Pornography and masturbation are better than zina. When talking about the gravity of the sin, Yes, pornography is not as grave as the actual sin of committing zina. That is, a couple engaging in physical and plain sexual activities out of the wedlock. Although the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that eyes too commit zina, and their zina is the lustful stare. Hands commit zina, and their zina is the unlawful touches, and so on. But the question here is, is pornography better than zina? The biggest problem is that pornography and masturbation, whether you like it or not, will ultimately lead you to zina sooner or later. The addiction one day will escalate and push you very hard to act out what you've been watching. That's why I do not believe it is better than zina. In fact, I consider it to be of the same weight as zina because it leads you to the same exact results. Ask yourself today, why should you believe in lies anyway? Now you know the lies. Would you not want to free yourself and embrace the truth? In the previous episode, I briefly talked about the man who was convicted in a rape case as a result of his addiction to porn. When I discussed with him some details, just to know how pornography could fuel his action to that extent, he stated the following, he said, that pornography depicts the rape scene so dramatically to, to make the viewers feel as if women are in fact like the idea of being raped. It shows men that although women may resist in the beginning, but within few seconds she's in the act as if this is what she's been waiting for. Such hints and messages in pornographic films feed the minds of so many men who would on the long run believe that rape is actually an enjoyable and acceptable act. 
in 2011 study which has been published in Sexual Addiction and Compulsivity as reported on the Huffington Post. They analyzed the effects of pornography use on sexual attitude and behaviors of fraternity college men. It found, as they have stated, that 83% of those who used mainstream pornography expressed greater intent to commit rape. Should they be assured they wouldn't get caught? As a person who has been talking about this issue for a while now, I receive phone calls, emails, and messages from sisters who would complain about how their husbands sometimes would beat them up, slap them, and pull their hairs aggressively during intimacy. They were concerned about these behaviors and asking why would men turn violent all of a sudden. The first response I will have for them is, sister, go and ask your husband if he has been watching pornography. Because this is the only explanation. This is how men learn to be violent toward their wives as a result of what they constantly watch. This is what the porn industry has been feeding them with, dirty and perverted ideas about sexual intimacy. Janet Henson, a researcher who led a study on the effects of pornography on abused women. She found that of the women who were sexually abused, 58% stated that pornography played a role in their abuse. In another research concerning the same matter, she found that out of 198 abused women, 49.9% reported the use of pornographic materials by their abuser. In another study, it is stated, and I quote, one out of four abusive men made their partners participate with them in their use of pornography by either watching it or simulating the performances. These abusers were measured as being the most violent out of all abusers. End quote. This is my message for men. Listen up very attentively. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, before his demise, he had something to tell us, men. In his last sermon, he said, O people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under Allah's trust and with His permission. If they ab abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them for they are your partners and committed helpers. I wanted to repeat that last part. They are your partners and committed helpers. My dear brothers, if, if you are addicted and been in this darkness for many years, ask yourself, isn't it time to open up to your beloved wife and ask her for help? Yes, she might react angrily at first, but be patient. I'm certain she will quickly cool down and offer you the necessary support. Otherwise, your addiction will lead you to violence, and that will go straight against the commands and the last will of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The addicts, whether single or married, on the long run, they will favor masturbation over real sexual intimacy with partners. This is what porn addiction leads to. And as a result, many who are obsessed with their addiction may suffer from what is called erectile dysfunction. That is the inability of maintaining the most essential part in having a sexual relationship with one's wife. Isn't it strange that people go to porn on the hope of enhancing their sexual ability with their wives, yet at the end pornography leads them to having no sex at all? That tells you a lot about the reality and seriousness of the matter. In a survey that was reported on the Daily Mail of the UK, they stated that one in five men watch porn three to five times a week, and 3% admit they prefer it to sex with a partner. They have also stated that watching porn is addictive in the same way as cocaine, with users building up a tolerance for hardcore content over time that leaves them unsatisfied with real-life sexual activity. 
a group of researchers from the Naval Medical Center of San Diego had 300 male and female patients fill out two surveys on their porn habits. For men, researchers noticed a strong association between regularly watching porn and suffering from a lack of sexual desire and erectile dysfunction. In the past 10 years or so, many men have been complaining about not being able to perform with their wives. The complaints can be seen in elder groups of men as 40 to about 50 plus years old or even as young as 20 years of age. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, it is not worth destroying your sex life by wasting it on that which will ultimately strip you away from all pleasures in life. So now, what you should do to reboot your system and get back in shape and start a fulfilling life? Number one, learn all you can about pornography addiction. Get the right understanding about addiction, that it is always about your brain and not the substance itself. Learn well that you could be addicted to absolutely anything as long as your brain perceives that thing as enjoyable and rewarding. Learn all you can about desensitization that pornography could cause, which is a numb response to anything pleasurable. Number two, change your environment. You will have to create a different environment other than that which you were accustomed to during your days of addiction to masturbation. One of the most important things that you should change, for example, is not using internet in private anymore. It will take a while to adjust to a new habit, but in no long time, you'll be able to create a fresh new environment that is healthy and lawful. Number three, replacement of the current habits. Whatever habit you'd like to create should be productive and enjoyable to you. Don't stress yourself about going to the gym if you're not into exercise, but perhaps you would love walking every morning in the park, or perhaps you love swimming instead of walking. Maybe reading or fishing is your thing. Whatever habit you wish to develop, it has to be productive and enjoyable so that you could be able to replace the old ones. Number four, be prepared for withdrawal symptoms. Sometimes it is really hard for people to understand this period because they weren't prepared for it. But when you know that pornography could cause depression, anxiety, and, and irritation, and so on, you would at least calm down when these uh, symptoms happen because you simply have known and have understood and have studied why they happen. Number five, find a support group to offer you help. There are many websites of that nature that could really create a difference in your life. Just knowing that you are not alone will provide you hope to fight harder and regain your strength and sexual life. You can check the community members of FAB, for example, where you can learn more and find the necessary support. Don't worry about when will you be able to quit. Just commit to quit and the rest will be easy. In the Sydney Morning Herald newspaper, they stated that one in three porn viewers are women. I want you to imagine this for a second. Women are also addicted to pornography just like men? When I was first approached by a sister confessing her addiction to me, I was literally frozen and I couldn't utter a word. Later on, I came to know that pornography does affect women in great ways too. In most cases, in much more dangerous ways than men. We know now that a large number of statistics have shown that a greater number of men most likely to view pornography than female. However, a significant growing number of female users has been noticed to be on the rise as well. Not only that, but in many cases, the way how women view and engage in pornographic acts is quite different and greatly dangerous, as I will be clarifying in a while. Men are very straightforward. They search the web, get the images they wanted, masturbate to it, 
and end of the story. However, women, and according to multiple studies, prefer cyber sex relationship instead of viewing regular pornographic films and images. They are after developing connection with someone instead of a solo access to nude images. And there comes the danger. Statistics have shown that more women tend to take their activities offline than most men. I've been counseling a sister who has been addicted to pornography long before getting married. But the issue is, after marriage, she wasn't able to quit. She did her best, she tried all she can, but she failed to remain sober for longer than two weeks. This is not the end of her problem. The biggest trauma of her life that she had to go through is when she has committed zina with a man other than her husband. And how long did it take her to commit this shameful act after her marriage? Seven months only. That's why I mentioned earlier that although more men are viewing pornography than women, we have seen that women's use of pornography is different and in most cases more dangerous. My dear sisters in Islam, I know you do not wish to end up your life in this misery. And I know that you hate every second you are out of control and being overpowered by your addiction. But as you can see, pornography for you will not remain as an individual and secretive act for so long. It takes shorter time for you to fall into one of the gravest sins we have been warned against by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, peace be upon him. So take a decision to seek out a professional counselor or a coach who can help you get rid of your addiction in order to enjoy your life with your family peacefully, shamelessly, and focus on pleasing your creator instead of feeding your growing desire. The first thing that you need to understand in order for you to break free from porn addiction and live a life of purity is to comprehend how habits work and how can you be able to replace the negative ones with positive. This is really the first and most important step that people should consider if they are serious about making positive changes in their lives. In his book, The Power of Habit, Charles Dewey discusses a golden rule that he called the habit loop, for which he explained that any habit, whether good or bad, goes around in a cycle of cues, routines, and rewards. The cue is that which can trigger you and pushes you to the action which we call habit, or in the context of these episodes we call addiction. Then the routine, which is the repetition of the same action again and again, and in your case it is the cycle of watching pornography and self-pleasuring. Then the reward, which is craved by your brain after completing the action. Understanding that cycle is very critical. Because if we can identify the cues or these triggers that ignite our undesirable activities, then most likely we'll be able to stop the activities themselves. Because most of the time people tend to focus on changing the act or the behavior itself and forget about the cues that are responsible for the habitual action. So for now I only wanted to address cues or triggers. There are basically five categories of cues. One, specific time during the day. Two, a certain place. Three, the presence of certain people. Four, a specific emotion. And five, a specific ritualistic behavior. Let us talk about each of these cues so that we can understand the habit loop further. One, specific time during the day. Most addicts, for instance, they watch pornography past midnight. So being awake at that time is the cue for them to repeat the activity. So what's the solution? Simply sleep early and you'll be able to break that cycle. Two, a certain place. Our brains will always associate certain places that we visit and that include particular websites on the internet with our behaviors. So if you happen to visit certain places like clubs, shopping centers, popular streets, and so on, then most likely you will go home that day with lots of sexual tension 
that may lead you to relapses. So what's the solution? Simply avoid going to these places. Three, the presence of certain people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, informed us that a person will always be inclined to follow the religion or the way of life of his friends. So be careful of who your friends are. So if your company are inviting you to that which is displeasing to Allah, then you better find a better circle of friends who will positively influence you to do what's right. Four, a specific emotion. Sometimes being bored can be a cue for relapses or repeating the undesirable activity. So what's the solution? Keep yourself busier and become a productive person. Five, a specific ritualistic behavior. Many addicts aimlessly browse the internet, social media websites, profile of random people, unnecessary YouTube videos, and so on. The result is always ending up watching hardcore pornography. Spending aimless time on the internet could, could fuel your addiction even more. So all you need at the beginning of your journey towards recovery is to identify your cues and you will be able to avoid the action itself. If you've benefited from this video and you'd like to see more Muslims improve their daily lives through education to uplift our families, our communities, and our ummah altogether, please support our efforts in creating this valuable content and help us to reach as many people as possible. Be a part of creating this continuous charity, this Sadaqah Jariyah. Click the link below to donate. Even a little support can go a long way. Jazakumullahu khairan.